Is the woman's long hair not the covering needed? Not hats or caps. Well, um, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, (coughs) the very same verse, if a woman have long hair, it's a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. That's true, isn't it? Earlier on we read, um, verse seven, well, verse six, if a woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Now, how do we translate this? If the woman is her hair, if a woman doesn't have hair, let her also have her hair taken off. That doesn't make any sense at all, does it? If a woman be not covered, if, if the hair is the covering, then it would be saying, if a woman doesn't have hair, then let her also have her hair cut off. So obviously we have two coverings in the passage, don't we? Well, that makes sense because there are three glories. There's the glory of God, the glory of the man, the glory of the woman. In order for the glory of God to be seen alone in the church, the glory of the man has to be covered and the glory of the woman has to be covered. The glory of the man is the woman. That's what we read, isn't it, in verse 7. The woman is the glory of the man. So in order for the glory of the man to be covered, the woman is given a natural covering of hair. The hair is a veil, a natural veil, which covers the man's glory. But that hair is also her glory. It's his covering, it's her glory. And so it also has to be covered. And there are two different Greek words for the hair as a veil, and then this other word, um, which is to be a, a second covering. Now, this idea is found in the Old Testament as well as the New. Uh, you have the coverings on the tabernacle. You know, you had the, the glorious covering and the ram skin dyed red and so on. One layer on top of another. You had the garments of the high priest. He didn't wear all those clothes because he was cold. Each one concealed and revealed. And this goes back to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve sinned, they lost their covering of glory and they were naked and they knew they were naked and they hid in the trees and they made fig leaves, but God said that won't do. Why did the fig leaves not do? I think they covered their nakedness, but that wasn't enough, you see. God took two animals and slew them and made skin clothing to cover them. And by that he was saying that these skins, these coverings, both concealed and revealed, concealed their nakedness and revealed that without the shedding of blood is no uh, forgiveness, no remission of sin. And so all the way through the Bible, we'll see this principle that each of these coverings, each of these veils concealed and revealed. The veil that hung between the holy place and holiest of all concealed the glory of God. No one could look on unveiled deity and live. And yet that veil also revealed something, woven it into it were the cherubim, taking us back to the Garden of Eden. And the reason why they couldn't go into the presence of God, because they were sinners. When we come to the New Testament, we have the veil of the body of Christ, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. His flesh was a veil, and just on the other side of the veil, like in the tabernacle and the temple, that's where God was. God was in Christ and his body was a veil. But his, that veil not only concealed God's glory, it also revealed God's character, didn't it? God was manifest in the flesh. So every veil that God provides both conceals and reveals. And so the woman's hair is given her for a covering, and it conceals the man's glory, for the woman is the man's glory, and it reveals the woman's glory. So a second covering is necessary, which conceals the woman's glory and reveals God's authority. Now, I know this is a very Irish thing, but you won't find hats in 1 Corinthians 11. Okay? Um, the idea of covering a glory is not to introduce another glory. Not to, you know, we're not supposed to have hats that look like the Garden of Eden, although... <laughs> Although the Garden of Eden is in chapter 11, that's not the idea. The idea is that it's a veil. Now, again, I know it's a cultural issue, and some people think, well, you know, if I do that, it looks like the Catholic Church, you know. Well, the Catholic Church was right on some things, you know. 
They were right about the virgin birth and they were right about the Trinity and things like that. So we don't say, well, we're not gonna teach the Trinity because, well, they teach that too, right? So they, they got some things right. And one of the things they got right was the veil. It's right, it's, it's what the word of God says. So the idea is not to introduce an alternate glory. The idea is to veil the glory. And that's, that's what the scripture, and again, I know this is a live grenade I'm throwing into the audience here. <laughs> I understand that. But uh, just simply from the text, it's the word veil. It is not the word for a hat. All right. <laughs> um, so the, the question being, is the woman's hair not a covering? Absolutely it is. It's a necessary covering. And that's why Paul says, well, a woman says, wait a minute, is my hair my glory? Yes. Well, then I'll take my hair off. I'll just cut my hair off. That'll fix it, won't it? Ah, he says, don't you realize that your hair is not only your glory, it's the man's covering. And if you take off your hair, you not only have removed your glory, you've removed his covering. And that's a shame, isn't it? So the woman, like the Gershonites in the Old Testament, is the steward of the coverings. I get up and preach to a few hundred people, sister, when you put on your veil, your covering, you're preaching to all the angels of heaven. You see, two thirds of the angels are watching. It looks like maybe the devil's winning down here. They might think they picked the wrong side, but when they look at the church, they see that there are companies of God's people in the world who acknowledge the headship of Christ and the glory of God, and they're encouraged as they look at you sisters. It's a solemn thing, it's a, it's a thrilling thing, isn't it? To, to understand this principle that they're looking and they're saying, here are people who recognize the authority of the Lord, just like we do. They cover themselves in his presence and they see the sisters covering themselves and they're encouraged to do that by watching the sisters. Never forget there was one angel, his name was Lucifer, son of the morning, and his, his title was the cherub that covereth. You can read about that in Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 14. The cherub that covereth. And it seems that his responsibility was to make sure there were no competing glories, that God got all the glory in the universe, but he wanted it for himself. And he said, I will set my throne above the heavens. I'll be as God, and God cast him down to hell. You can understand why he would make a frontal attack on this symbol. Now, let's remember that the head covering is a symbol. The real thing is submission to the headship of Christ and the glory of God. So it's quite possible for a sister to wear a covering and not be submissive in her heart. But I can't see that, and the angels can't see that. And so uh, sometimes I wonder, are, uh, some people say this, well, I'd rather see a sister who's submissive without a head covering than a sister who's rebellious with a head covering. And I say, well, how do you see that? I can't see your heart. I can just see your head. And so the, the symbol is to be there, and hopefully the reality is going to be there too. We can break bread and see the emblems there and not discern the Lord's body. I know that. And we can go through the waters of baptism and not understand the symbolism. And the same is true with the head covering. There are many sisters who put hats on their head every Sunday, don't have the foggiest idea why they do it. Well, that's not good either, right? We want to understand why, and we want to see the principle so that when we do it, we are doing it saying, the glory is all for him. That's, that's the, the idea. And when a man stands to speak, the head coverings that he sees remind him my glory's under there too. The sister's not just covering her glory, she's covering his glory. Both glories are covered, right? Because the man is the glory of the woman, she is covered with the veil of her hair, the natural covering. So that even if the sister doesn't care about exposing her own glory, at least my glory's covered. I can't, I don't have any control over that. And so God has given the woman first a natural covering, which covers my glory, unless she cuts her hair off. But if her hair, and, and by the way, long hair does not mean as long as it can be. Otherwise, the man's hair means as short as it can be, and we'll all have to get buzz cuts. So it, it's maintaining the distinction between the man and the woman. There's a man in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who kept getting shorter and shorter haircuts because the women kept getting shorter and shorter haircuts, and he said, I guess it's my responsibility to maintain the distinction. But um, 
the idea is the maintaining of the distinction between the man and the woman. It is not as long as it can be. The word long means to throw about as a mantle, the way you'd throw a, a cape over your shoulders, but that's only a word. You don't build a doctrine on a word. The dear sisters in Africa, they could throw their heads around all they wanted and they'd never be able to throw their hair over their shoulders. So it's, it's, it, don't, don't build a doctrine out of the meaning of a Greek word.